Hi guys! Welcome to the first video of this new year. This is going to be a little different. It's going to be sort of like a challenge that was inspired by the art community here on YouTube, where people have been taking all their art supplies in a specific color and using them to create a piece of art. And for my take on it, I'm going to use it to repaint a doll. I saw Bailey J do this sort of challenge video type thing a few days ago, and I decided it would be fun to try, only I went for blue. So first off, let's see what we have to work with. Firstly, I have my watercolor pencils, which I always use on repaints, and these were all the ones I had that I thought was blue and not purple or turquoise. Next up is acrylic paint, which I usually always use, but I didn't actually have that many shades of blue because I will often add other paints to them to mix up the colors. But to keep it just a little bit challenging, I won't be mixing other colors into them or whites or anything. I'll just be mixing these blues together to use. My supply of chalk pastels in blue is very limited, I only have these four. And then I had some mica powders in blue shades as well, which mainly add shimmer. But I thought I'd include it all anyway. And since we all know I have this problematic glitter addiction going on, I added all the blue types of glitter that I had. And I actually went all in and found all my blue rhinestones and like nail art pearls and stuff as well. And just figuring I'd use a little bit from each category, not necessarily every single shade because it wouldn't fit on the doll. And I don't always use glitter, but now that we have it, why not? And finally, I have a bit of doll hair and yarn, which I typically use because I will usually always change up the hair of the doll and I just felt it would feel incomplete if I didn't add this. So the only non-blue art supply I'll be allowing myself is a bit of white acrylic paint and my white pencil specifically for adding the white of the eyes and white highlights not to mix into the other colors because I want to work only with the shades that I have because I feel that's part of the challenge for me so that's the only thing I'll be using the white for. So finally on to the doll. For the base of this project I'll be using this Monster High Frankie doll and I chose her because she has this very pale skin tone which I felt would look very nice with the blue. So per the norm, I'll be prepping the doll by removing the original hair, both cutting off the excess and pulling out the plugs from the inside, then using a bit of acetonyl polish remover to take away the factory paint of the face, giving it a wash, and then priming it with the Mr. Super Clear spray. And this is just so that the doll has a bit of grip and you can actually use these materials on them so they'll actually stick. But just before we start, I thought I'd do a quick rundown of what the different shades look like just on a white sheet of paper for you guys. And I actually had a tough time picking out the pencils just because I thought it was hard to know when a pencil would be considered too greenish or too purplish. But I did my best, so this was what I had to work with. And my paints looked very much alike, so I didn't have much range there, but oh well. And for the mica powders, they don't have much color to them. They're mainly shimmer, but we'll work with what we have. So this is what I have to work with. So firstly, I took one of the medium blue pencils and I used this to do the first kind of sketching of the eyes, just to try and figure out the eye shape I was going for. The doll mold of the face actually had slightly upward turned eyes and they came to much of a point, but I decided to round them off slightly because I was going for a very cute sort of look for this because I also had kind of a vague idea of the style I was going for, so very cutesy. Um, so I rounded off the shape and once I had um, the, the basics on, you know, I copied to the other eye and symmetry is always really, really hard for me and takes me a lot long time off camera. And once I had that, I started going in with darker shapes to try to define it. I haven't worked in a monochromatic scheme in a very long time, so I actually thought it was very interesting to challenge yourself by limiting yourself to this sort of one color to try and see what you can do within that. The only difficult part I found was that I didn't have a very big range going from light to dark within my blues, and that's because I tend to just mix things up using whites or other colors, like I mentioned before. But it is a good challenge, and I kind of switched between using the pencils for some things and then the acrylic paint for where I needed there to be very, you know, much of a definition, and I used the pencil for 
softer colors in some areas and then I used the chalk pastel for shading. I didn't really have anything for blush so there I used a bit of the uh, mica powders which just added a bit of shimmer later on just to add a little bit of you know difference to the face. That's, that's the main thing because you don't want it to look flat. I was originally planning to give her pupils, which I will usually do for my dolls, but I changed my mind and just went for a gradient of dark blue and the top shading to the lightest blue I had at the bottom, just to really focus on the gradient, because if I made a big plot of the darkest blue in the middle, it will really coincide with the colors of the lashes, which was also going to be the darkest blue. And I didn't end any um, three-dimensional lashes which I will usually do because I like the look of it but I, I made it for this challenge because I only had black ones and I felt that would you know be kind of cheating so therefore I just painted on the lashes and I had to actually remember to do that because usually I don't and then add the lashes afterwards but I remembered. For the eyebrows I used a bit of chalk pastel to lightly sketch them on and the good part about that is you can Apply it with a little brush and then you can use an eraser to take away until you have the shape that you want. And it's a little less permanent than using the colored pencils right away because even though you can usually erase the pencils a little bit, um, I just get a little scared sometimes about going in like with the pencil right away. So I like this uh, soft brushing first and when I have the right shape and I think they're even as they should be then use the pencil on top to create sort of, you know, strokes that kind of look like hairs in the right direction. For the lips, I used a pencil to add a bit of base color and then used a very light mica powder which was very light and shimmery on top just to add a slight bit of almost like texture difference to the face. As usual, I work in layers and when I can't build up the colors anymore, I give it another spray of Mr. Super Clear so I can work on top. For eyeshadow, I use my lightest pencil for the base color and then use some chalk pastel on top to kind of smoke it out. And also use my darkest shade of blue pastel to shade the whites of the eyes and actually the iris even though it wasn't that visible which I always do because I feel it just adds a lot of dimension and makes the eyes look less flat. I didn't have the firmest idea of what I wanted the face to look like so I really went with the flow and just kind of adjusted it as I went along and I thought she ended up looking really cute and therefore I just added even more shimmer and then in one of the final layers I decided that I could use a bit of water into my mica powder which gives a you know more uh, intense color payoff and use that for a bit of extra eyeliner just on top of the dark eyeliner and also ended up using it to add freckles to her cheek just because I, I felt it would look really cute and I think it did. I also ended up using a bit of the wet mica powder on the 
bottom of the iris to add a bit of shimmer and not definition but just a bit of reflection of the light because unfortunately my lightest paint color just wasn't that light so it just helped add a bit of dimension to the eyes. I used the watercolor effect of my lightest blue pencil to make some lines on the lips again just for a bit of added texture and dimension and just to make everything look less flat and then I used my white pencil straight onto the face just for very subtle highlights it didn't make that much of a difference but it's just habit for me to do it anyway and then I used the white acrylic paint for the final white dots in the eyes for the reflection And here was the face before I gave it the final seal and I'm just twisting and turning it a little so you guys can actually see the reflection of the shiny mica powder. So once she was all dry it was time to move on to hair and after evaluating my different options I decided to go with the lightish yarn that I had because I felt it would very much match her eyebrows and then I thought to myself I could do a dark blue glitter part in her hair because I always wanted to do a glitter part on a doll but I just didn't know which doll to do it on so I was like this is the time. So I chose the light blue and I brushed it out like I usually do because it's acrylic yarn I could straighten it and then I glued it on. Um, with a middle part and the hair going in opposite direction of the way you want it so I could then tighten it into two cute little space buns. I won't be making a completely new outfit for this doll in this video because I decided to stick to the repaint portions which was where I used my basic art supplies because otherwise I would have to include all of my blue fabric and this video is just going to be way too long so I decided to omit that for now. So once I had the hair styled the way I wanted it, I added a tiny bit of glue and kind of faded it out from the middle of the part on each side and then drizzled on dark blue glitter as a nice contrast and I just dabbed a little in place before shaking off the excess. Since I included my rhinestones and pearls and stuff in the challenge, I decided to add a rhinestone to each of her ears, kind of like earrings, and then I used some of the flat back blue pearls, which were shaped like little flowers and bows, and stick those onto the hair to kind of be like hair decorations or, you know, little pin-on thingies. To finish off the actual repaint, I like to glaze the eyes and sometimes the lips. Not everybody does because it's a little hard to photograph, but I just think it really deepens the color and brings everything out. And here she's technically done, but since I already had my yarn out and I hadn't used the dark blue one, I was like, I'm gonna knit her a scarf. And I'm not going to give you any tips on knitting because I'm really bad at knitting and I haven't knitted for like years. But I just did a few little stitches or whatever you call them and knitted this little long scarf, added some of the light blue yarn at the ends and then put that on her.
And ta-da! Here she is all finished! I can't tell you who she is, what she is, or where she's going looking like this, but I think she turned out really cute and I really enjoyed this kind of challenge. If you enjoyed this little challenge video, let me know by hitting the like button below. And if you want to see any more like this, you can leave requests down in the comments, either for different colors you'd like to see me work with, or different challenges if you have any ideas. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give me a little cheeky like if you did, and I'll see you guys in a new video real soon. Bye!